Well, all right, Brian Weed. We had the, uh, the big press row podcast, Sports Game of the Year mm -hmm. uh, episode last week. Um, a lot of people have reached out to me. A lot of people have commented on it. Um, a lot of positive, some some controversy. Oh, I'd, like to, controversy. I'd like to hear about that. Yeah, I yeah. want to hear about that. Well, the number one controversy as far as volume was the debate whether Rocket League is, you know, oh. should be part of the conversation, right? Is it a sports game, right? I mean, you know, many people had it as a no-brainer sports game of the year. Yeah. Other people are like, there's no way that should be, you know, factored in. It, it's not, you know, it's not in the same league um, as a Madden or a FIFA or an NBA or an MLB. Um, I'm, you know, as somebody who didn't include it in my top three, my top three was uh, Madden at number three, um, NBA 2K at number two, and number one was MLB The Show. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the overall winner was NBA 2K16. You know, I, I, I didn't. I didn't not include it. Does that make sense? I, I, it was not excluded. How about that? From my personal list, not because of any, is it a sports game or isn't a sports game. Uh -huh. It just wasn't a, I played as much as or enjoyed as much as the three games that were in my list. Of course it was, it was in your list and you are, you know, one of the biggest fans of it. So what are your thoughts as to the controversy, as it were, about whether Rocket League should even be part of that conversation yeah. for a sports team of the year? Well, it's um, it, it's not a traditional sports game, obviously. It's not a replication of uh, a, an existing sport necessarily. I mean, it takes the uh, base of soccer and just uh, flips it on its head with cars and, and – uh, uh, you know, three, anywhere from one to, to four on the pitch at a given time. And then they've even done stuff like now you have a hockey mode. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's hard for me to say that's not a sports game when you have it, it is soccer. There are two goals at the end. You've got a ball <laughs> and it is hockey. There's a puck. There's two goals at the end. You can play as a goalie. You can move out, you know, you can do it. You can use these same, um, strategies and same tactics that that you find in sports within the game it requires cooperation between teammates when when you have multiple people in there it requires passing the ball you get assists you score goals i mean it's a sports game uh but i understand and and it's partially why um when i was debating my, my number one sports game for the year that i went with nba 2k over it is not because Rocket League isn't a sports game. It's because Rocket League has uh, this this freedom that simulation sports games don't have. You know, NBA 2K has to precisely replicate what happens within a realistic framework. You know, you can't have guys scoring 150 points going 20 for 20 from three point range. You can, you know, you can't have guys dunking from the three point line. I mean, it's not an arcade game. You can't do uh, wacky stuff with it. You can't be as creative as someone like a Rocket League where they have no parameters they have to stick within. They have no league license dictating content to them. Uh, so Rocket League, they can do whatever they want with that and they can create a game that is really fun based on the rules they set, based on the physics they create, based on uh, the, the arena it's in, based on how the cars move, how fast they are, how they maneuver, how they fly, how they climb walls. I mean, they have the ability to, to twist things any way they want. And they've done that with, uh, with, with free updates, like where they made the ball bouncy and they, made, they messed with gravity and, and they did all these fun things, which is great. Now, now 2K Sports doesn't have that freedom. They, they, they have to make a realistic game that looks like what you see on TV or in person and, and is you know, set in reality. And so that's why, why, for me, 2K got the nod. It's because their achievements because of that were greater in my eyes. They, what they had to overcome was greater, and the type of people they have to uh, market the game for and design the game for, are, are it's more varied. They, have, they need six different modes, all with depth to them. They need, they need online to run well and six different online modes, you know, and they need, they need to tie in a virtual currency in some way that makes them money in, in a mode or two or within the whole game. Uh, so overcoming those obstacles, I think, 
is what made NBA 2K the greater game for me this year. Although, like I said on the podcast, uh, if I was picking a favorite game, that would probably be Rocket League. The other controversy, and again, you know, it's not like I'm getting bombarded by thousands of no's, but there were definitely more than a handful of people who replied that, okay, Rocket League this year, Super Mega Baseball last year, you know, you guys, meaning all of us, are purposely trying to be contrarian or trying to, you know, at one That's the least, opposite of what we do, I think, for the know, most part. And one person said, you guys are trying to stick it to the big-time sports game makers. Uh, you know, and uh, if that is anybody's mindset, it certainly isn't mine or yours, nor do I think that is anybody else's. I think it's simply that, you know, Super Mega Baseball last year, I believe, came in third, right? If I, if yeah, I, uh, yeah I think it was third. Although um, uh, Owen and Sam at Polygon, I think they named it their sports game of the year, but in our press row podcast, it was yeah I think it was third you're right right so there were there was more than a few people who who felt that we were for you know whatever reason just purposely trying to you know single out a non-traditional sports game or exclude uh, from uh, you know the, the the big time games from others and you know that's just not the case it turned out that I mean again just like last year just like Rocket League wasn't in my top three this year super mega baseball fun game really good game um, you know, and, and we've gotten to know the guys who made the game and, and, and um, you know, but it wasn't in my top three last year either. So, you know, I think it just goes to show. I mean, that's why, you know, on the show we have, you know, as I mentioned, you know, people from Metacritic sites. We've got independent folks, right? You know, we got you. We've got, uh, you know, the Operation Sports Guys, which is the biggest sports community. we got TJ, who's just a fan, right? We've got all sorts of different folks. And when you get those different perspectives, you're going to have different views. So, you know, there were definitely some people that, that felt that we were again for the second year in a row, you know, purposely bringing an indie or a small title into the mix that may not have deserved. So uh, your thoughts on that sort of, uh, you know, higher level contrarian uh, you know, commentary. <laughs> Uh, there'd be easier ways to do that and attract attention if we if that was the if that was the goal, than uh, awarding a game second or third place in our uh, in our list. Um, I think what you have to consider is that we play these games every year for extended periods of time. You know, we're still playing Madden NBA 2K yep. months later. Yep. You're still playing the show nine I months am. later. I am. Um, so when you go year to year, it, for the most part. It, this hasn't necessarily been the case with NBA 2K, but with other games, incremental improvements, additions. I mean, it's not anything drastic. And so what we have are, are games that, that we enjoy, but maybe most of them don't blow us away, right? Because we have certain expectations already. We have a baseline. We know where Madden is this year. So where it is next year will just be you know a, a certain amount above it. Uh, so when a new game comes in the market, because we don't have – creative games anymore we don't have these arcade type games or anything like that instead of just the normal simulation games we want something different too and, and they aren't being developed very often anymore you know we want we loved the bigs back then you can't tell oh, me we yeah. were contrarian for loving the bigs that was a fantastic game or you can go back to the nba streets and the nba jams and, and the uh, nfl blitz and streets um these games that or or um, you know, Blitz the League even was another game w that was well liked a, a while back that was way off the wall. Um, so what those games have the potential to do, what a Rocket League or a Super Mega Baseball has the potential to do, is surprise us and excite us in a way that that is really not possible with those other games for the most part. Um, so so they're going to catch our attention, and I think also we do want to support efforts like that. We do want to see them succeed because we want more games like that. Rocket League is a huge hit. They've got like 8 million people playing, which, by the way, is more than NBA 2K or Madden or uh, the only one that might be higher is FIFA. Uh, it's popular, and we want that to be the case for games that we like because that means those developers will create sequels or other developers will come up with their own creative. You don't think EA Sports right now is looking at a Rocket League and saying, man, we missed the boat on that for eSports. Because that game right there, they could have done something like that and they didn't. Um, 
so so there's a lot of uh, thinking that goes on uh, beyond just you know, well, this game's better in this way, in this way, in this way. Here you have a brand new game that comes in. I mean, what, the Game Awards, not this year, but last year, had uh, in the sports category, had Mario Kart <laughs> as an option. We're not doing that. You know, we, we might include racing games in our thinking, but those are probably never going to make the, the top. Um, it, it's just a, a sense of newness and a sense of um, excitement that comes with some of these different types of games that, you know, when a good one comes along, and because they have to be good, or else they're, they're not going to get any attention. I mean, it's not like Super Mega Baseball. You know, most people like that game. It just didn't really reach a widespread audience. Rocket League, everyone seems to love, and it reached a widespread audience. And uh, and that game has more mainstream appeal than any of our sports games do, Rich. The last, the last um, question, so to speak, and this came from a couple different people, not exactly, I'm paraphrasing it, but a couple of folks said, what will it take or what has to happen for Madden or FIFA to get back into the top spot? If you recall, FIFA was our first sports game of the year um, back when we first did it. I, I, don't, I don't remember which year, uh -huh. um, uh, but um you know, Madden has never been the pressure podcast sports game of the year. I think we all agree that it's gotten better. Um, certainly taken significant leaps from the last couple of years on the 360 and PS3. You know, we play it regularly. Um, in your mind, is it more that, you know, an NBA and an MLB have to really fall? Or, like, what what has to happen to get, and we'll take mm -hmm. them each each one at a time. Like Madden, which we think is a good game of people, which is a good game. What do you think will, and not just you and me, but, like, the, the group of people, what has to happen for those two games to sort of leapfrog over an NBA and an MLB? Well, I think I think in the case of Madden, a lot of that is gameplay related, and we, we did see a lot of improvement this year. There's also presentation, um, which is still one of the weakest uh, aspects of Madden from commentary to uh, just the, the game day presentation that you would normally see on television that doesn't look anything like it does in Madden and within franchise mode where the presentation doesn't really tie you in very much to what's going on in your league. Um, also, you have there in Madden a career mode that hasn't been touched in like six years. Uh, there's really nobody wants to play that single player career mode anymore within connected franchise. Um, so, so there's a lot of fundamental stuff for Madden there that they've been improving on, but that they still have a ways to go. And there's still, if you talk about gameplay or presentation, there's, there's very few ways in which Madden is the best. I mean, there are lots of ways where Madden is good or above average, but I don't know if there's anything Madden does better than uh, any other sports game. Uh, so they have to excel in some way. And over the years, that's kind of been Madden's problem. It's been a good game generally. Uh, but they had to design the game because they have the exclusive NFL license. They had to design the game to appeal to everyone. So they did a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, they they tinkered with making gameplay a little more arcadey or accessible, uh, you know, back and forth. And you had those uh, uh, the the leads of the development or or the suits above changing the you know quote unquote vision of the game or the you know the core focus of the game every year or every two years so you never really had consistency building up so madden needs consistency and it needs to excel in certain ways that it just hasn't yet fifa i think um is in a is in a tougher spot actually because they've been on the top for so long and it they've gotten picked away at and they they're they're Focus has gone more towards Ultimate Team, which is great for the people who play Ultimate Team, but uh, other people outside of that feel a little left out, and their gameplay fluctuates. It, for some reason, it's really good one year, and then the next year, it's off. It just feels off, and then they they have issues with you know patches changing the way the game plays, positive and negative. Um, so so there's a there's perception issues there as well, and FIFA actually has a competitor, which makes things a little more interesting, but. I'm I'm not sure that the others have to fall. I mean, you look at NBA 2K, they didn't need uh <laughs> NBA Live did fall, but they didn't need it to fall. If they had done everything they did, NBA Live was irrelevant to that to their climb. Um so I mean, you had they have to be innovative and a lot, a lot of these games are not being innovative in the way that uh NBA 2K has, which is a great example of you have to invest and you have to focus on the right areas to uh to you know, really succeed in that regard. 
I mean, there's no doubt that NBA 2K and MLB The Show are the darlings of the Press Row podcast because, you know, they have swapped game of the year for the last couple, two or three years, right? Like this year was NBA 2K16. Last year was MLB The Show. The year before that, it was NBA 2K14, right? So, you yeah, know. And, and the previous two years, I did not agree. I did not think NBA 2K14. I did not think MLB14, uh, the show, should have won either. Uh, they had so many uh, various issues, but um, you know it's 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 a wide it's a wide panel, and you get you get a, a sampling <laughs> of different different um, priorities and everything. And uh, you know I, I don't know you know like the show is hampered by coming out in March. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely part of it. Now we give it a ton of attention come mm-hmm. award season. We're still talking about it regularly. Yep. It's always in the mix, mm-hmm. even if it doesn't win. Now that's not the case at, at an awards like the Game Awards, a more general awards show right. where the, the show's long forgotten, um, and and it's it's just again we had so many sports games bunched together this year that it's hard for something else to break out. You know, people are generally going to go with the games they feel comfortable with and mm-hmm. the games they've already enjoyed, so it makes it harder for something else to kind of break out of that. But uh, but we'll see as we go forward if that can happen. So as always, a lot of conversation, uh, a lot of a lot of people listening, a lot of people talking to us about uh, the Press Row Podcast Sports Game of the Year episode. If you haven't listened, uh, please go give it a, a listen. It's a lot of fun, a lot of arguments, a little bit of fisticuffs, some hard feelings, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, and, okay. and, and the interesting thing is, as we talk about these games, is that our top three, 2K16, Rocket League, and the show, we're like a league above the pack. I mean, Madden was next. Yes. That was way behind. And then yes. uh, what did we have after that? FIFA yep. had a point or two. I mean, uh, barely acknowledged. Yeah. And uh, exactly. Pro Evolution Soccer didn't get any. Nope. Uh, partially because of its botching of roster updates. And Well, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll bet you this, Brian, and this is based upon nothing other than – I mean, I think I was probably the biggest fan of that game on the show. Uh, you and know, you still on, didn't vote it in. I didn't because yeah. I played – uh, more of Madden and more of MLB The Show and more of NBA 2K16, uh, right? You know, it, and the the reason is because we're in a community of Madden. Like, the, the only place I would have possibly put Pro Evolution would have been at number three, but then I would have had to bump down Madden, and then I would have purposely sort of been contrarian, right? Because if I'm honest with myself, I play yeah. Madden – you know, in two online leagues, not again, because I think Madden is the greatest football game of all time, but because I do enjoy participating in a community. Now, if I had a pro evolution community, like if we had an online league where we had, you know, you had Swansea and I had Everton and TJ had Liverpool or whatever club he decides to, to, you know, uh, be a supporter of this week, you know, maybe it would be different, but that's not a, community and that we're in and and so yeah. therefore if i were to choose pro evolution yes i recognize it's terrific but at the end of the day i wind up playing mad more and enjoying mad more because of the community you know i got to be honest with myself in this as well yeah and the uh the online league idea that you mentioned is one way in which fifa or pro evolution could sure. make a jump i bet you if we had a decent online league in either one of those that it would become a top three game uh, for us uh, in the future, so there's different ways. Again, it's about it's about innovation. It's about um, doing more. I think doing uh, going above and beyond just what is expected or um, you know the bare minimum for a yearly update. And and there's only a handful of games that do that every year. We only have seven or eight really legitimate sports games now as it is. So when you trim it down to three or four, you're you're left with some really strong options. <laughs> 